Well, you've heard me rant on enough about trying to get the darn guitars to be in tune. If the focal point on the saddle is out by 12 thou, that's enough for it to be sharp or flat. This is how much I needed to cantilever past the focal point that the manufacturer left us. I had to come back like a quarter of an inch to get this guitar to play in tune. You know, the customer it's a young fella, excited, and bought the guitar. It's a beautiful guitar. You look at the thing, you look at all the engineering that went into this guitar. You know, it's, it's really an amazing sounding guitar, and it actually plays in tune now. But uh, I gotta tell you, to have to move the focal point back like a, almost a quarter of an inch for it to intonate, it's ridiculous. I suppose if you're playing slide and it was a mile out of tune like that, it wouldn't really matter. But Adrian had bought this guitar with the intention of just playing it like a regular guitar. A little bit of slide now and then, but the way it was set up, as you saw, I just pointed out, it was virtually impossible to play this guitar in tune. So have a listen now. Here's your garden variety D chord. So now he can play this guitar without a slide. Now when the customer bought this guitar, he wasn't necessarily thinking of just tuning to an open chord and using a slide. He just wanted to play it like a normal guitar. Now, for a lot of customers that would own this guitar and just play it to an open chord tuning and use it for slide, you might play it for a year and never even notice. But as soon as you start to play this guitar like a normal guitar should be played, there wasn't a chance this guitar would ever play in tune. And you saw how much I had to displace the focal point on the bridge, like move it back a quarter of an inch. So, you know, all this beautiful engineering, you've got that amazing, you know, sort of chrome and the, you know, the resonator and even the machine heads are not too bad. Fretwork was, uh, needed some work. The actual installation of the frets was good, but it did need to be leveled and dressed. And I, this actually has a zero fret in it. And I did have to sort of scrape away at that a little bit to get it, uh, all those first position chords to play in tune. I mean, it's a beautiful sounding guitar. I'm trying to give you the best perspective possible on the lay of this neck. I did adjust the truss rod. The guitar does need a fret dress. There's some fret wear here. The lay of the neck from here to here is good. There's no rocking, but right at the 12th fret where the neck joins the body right here, that's our high spot. Now, having said that, this fingerboard actually ramps down a little bit, which is a really good thing because in the long run this guitar will be good for a long, long time. But we still need to hit that highest spot, which is the 12th fret, and blend this area in and take care of the fret wear here. I need to mention this again, I mentioned a couple other videos, but this is the XLT unit with the single pivoting block. 
When you're doing that fret dress at the neck junction, which is something you've heard me say a thousand times, that's by far the most popular fret dress is where the neck joins the body. Whether it's a Strat, a Tele, a Martin, or a Les Paul, that's the most likely spot for you to dress and level. So when that's the case, that neck to body junction, the XLT works fine. I'm just gonna, and I'll take a second, show you right now. Before I start, we, we got this. I'm gonna dress it. Let's check that again now. We've taken care of all that. In this case, the height of the crown of the fret was high enough that we could take the real estate out of the crown and get the whole neck laser straight. And that's what we got. So when you move obliquely across the crown like this, if I don't move obliquely, if I just went like this, there would be trace marks on either side of the file. When I slip over the crown obliquely, then what we're doing is really just leveling along the string path. So this neck now is better, way better than it's ever been. There's going to be some pretty serious recrowning going on here. I'll bring you in for a look at that too. So first of all, I just want to sort of span the whole fingerboard to let you see how much I had to take out of those crowns. You can see there's a lot of recrowning to do. Most of those frets are squared right off on top. We're going to take care of that. Starting at the highest fret here, we'll just start chasing those crowns back towards the center. These last few frets didn't take as much of a hit because as I mentioned earlier the the fingerboard actually ramps down which uh, from a structural standpoint that's a really good thing because this guitar now that this work is done this guitar will be good for a long long time it's a generous enough crown that we were able to do this okay we'll bring us up to the so that brings us up to the 12th fret. Of course, the 12th fret is where the neck joins the body on this guitar. That took the biggest hit by far. But I'm going to bring you in again and give you another angle on this so you can understand exactly what we're doing. We're making our way up towards the nut. And now we're ready to scrub those crowns right back to dead center. I was going to mention too, if anyone wants extra fret guards, you do get six in your kit. I'm just doing this for the Patreon. Here are three guys. Let me know if you want some extra games. You notice I didn't mask off those inlays because they're real pearl snowflakes, so they're not really affected by the uh, by the sandpaper like the plastic, the soft plastic on the Les Paul. Now we got our 600 grit. Even after all that leveling, we still got 45 thou in those crowns. This was the one that really took the hit, the 12th fret. It's down to 42 thou. 42 thou, nothing wrong with that. Lots of brand new guitars come with a 42 thou high crown. And now we're on to the final buff.
So here's a perfect example of what I mentioned earlier on in the video. See how that washer is kind of wiggling? Well, this is how much torque you need. I've made contact. Just give it an extra eighth of a turn. That's it. This one too. Don't use too much pressure on these things. Like I said, a toddler could strip every one of these. So just make contact. Give it an extra eighth or quarter of a turn. Before we throw those new strings on, I want to show you how we adjust the action on a guitar like this. The action was actually hiked up pretty high because of that discrepancy at the neck to body junction, which threw off the intonation and everything else. Now, of course, the intonation on a dobro is movable if you're using a slide. This is how we lower the action at the bridge. So we take it off the bottom. The top actually has a radius to match the fret, so don't mess with the top. It comes off the bottom. So I got a pretty good idea how much we need to take off here. I'm not going to get too rambunctious, but I'm just scribing a line across here. I'll take this other piece out and scribe a line there as well, same distance. We'll just hit this on the disc sander. So the actual intonation, and we're going to check into that as we, uh, as we put the new strings on, but you can see by rotating this you can lengthen the bass string and shorten the first string, much like a regular acoustic guitar. You also have a little bit of play on the actual resonator plate as well. And we're going to put the strings on, check the intonation, and see how much we got to work with. These are the D'Addario EJ19 strings. So this is Dudario's bluegrass string. Excuse me, I've got a mouthful of strings here. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay. Yeah, so these are the bluegrass strings. For the bass strings, it's like a medium set. And for the top strings, for the thinner strings, it's like a regular light set. We'll verify this intonation. Once we get her tuned up here. No compensated nut on this one. There's a zero fret. But all that engineering and all the cool looking features and the finish and the chrome and everything, it really doesn't mean much if it doesn't play in tune. So here we go. There's a G. D. There's another G. Another G. Another G. D. That, my friends, is intonation. This guitar, for the first time since it was made, is perfectly in tune.